ungrounded receptacles. How do you repair them in a residential property? That's what we're going to talk about. I've already got an outlet here that I've repaired in this home because throughout the whole house, everything was actually already grounded properly. There were only two outlets that were ungrounded, one in the living room and one in one of the bedrooms. So to save money for the property owner, I decided that we were not going to end up running new wiring because that would be the only way to get a ground back to it besides, well, I guess not the only way because you could run an individual ground, but by that point, you might as well just run a whole new wire, a whole new Romex wire. So there are, there is another way that you can repair ungrounded outlets um, without running new wire. So let's check this out here. Right down here, you can see we have GFCI outlet, okay? And you might be wondering, why would you put a GFCI outlet on this two wire? And you can clearly see that's, uh, you know, two wires. There's no ground back in there. It's all, all already been checked. But you can clearly see when we go to plug it in, just like an inspector would, right? The inspector's plugging it in. He's checking everything. And it shows you right there, that's ungrounded, right? And actually, I already did this job. There's one more of these back in here. There's one more of these back in the bedroom, but uh, they came back and inspected, did a reinspection just to make sure all this work was done. And uh, they still brought up on the inspection report that, hey, two of these outlets still look like they're ungrounded. So obviously they don't understand this code. So that's what I'm gonna show everybody today. What is this code and how can you repair these ungrounded outlets to actually bring it up to a, a code minimum? So we'll take a look at that. Let's go take a look. So here we are in the National Electrical Code, and we're going to find this uh, code here in 406.4, which is going over receptacles, cord connectors, you know, all that, all that kind of stuff. But uh, if we read through here, we see it talks about grounding type. That's not the situation we're dealing with here, though, right? But if we go right down here to 406.4, um, two, uh, actually D2, we find non-grounding type receptacles. And here it's going to give us the requirements and what we can do. Where attached to an equipment grounding conductor, where attached to an equipment grounding conductor does not exist in the receptacle enclosure, the installation shall comply with all of these, A, B, and C. And we can see right here a non-grounding type receptacle shall be permitted to be replaced with another non-grounding type receptacle. Basically that just means you can replace a two-prong with another two-prong outlet. B says a non-grounding type receptacle shall be permitted to be replaced with a GFCI type receptacle. These receptacles or their cover plates shall be marked no equipment ground. So that right there is the code that uh, we're following here and installing this GFCI. And I can assure you that that is up to code standards by putting this GFCI in. It doesn't matter what this house inspector says that, oh, this thing still looks like it's ungrounded. No, we are up to the code standard here. They might not necessarily like it. Um, and I guess they can still demand that the seller, you know, put an actual wire there. But as far as me as the electrician, keeping something to the National Electrical Code minimums, putting this uh, GFCI in and marking it no equipment ground keeps me in the clear. So that's what we've done here. And let me show you the stickers. So here's the stickers and you're going to get these. If you buy any packs of GFCIs, you're going to get these stickers with them. And if you look right here, you've got these that say no equipment ground, right? And what did this say in the code? It says you need to mark one. You mark the receptacle itself or the cover plate with no equipment ground. So there's the sticker right there. Man, how easy and simple is that? So basically that's what I did. And if you can see here, we've got it marked when the inspector came, but they were still telling me you know, we're just writing it up. This stuff appeared to still be ungrounded. So when you put this plug checker in this GFCI, 
it still says that it's ungrounded, right? Because it is ungrounded. And that's why we marked it that it's ungrounded. But it's got the GFCI protection, which is going to trip at the 5 milliamp. This senses the imbalance and it's going to trip. So it's still going to give the protection that we want. But basically, when you go to use your tester, the tester that tells you if it's ungrounded, correct, if it's reverse neutral, a lot of those actually have a test button that you can push on there to try to test the GFCI. That's not going to work as well because it has to have the ground for that tester to actually work properly. But the way that we know that the GFCI is going to properly work when it's ungrounded is you actually have to go to the test button itself. And we see right there, you hit the test button, it trips. Just check it again just to make sure. Test button, it trips. So that right there shows me that this GFCI is properly working. So when they're ungrounded, that's the proper way. You actually have to use the test button itself to do the GFCI trip test to make sure they work. But that's basically everything. And uh, like video, comment with anything you have, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.